Right, I want to begin by thanking everyone that made the UNC Clean Tech Summit possible. I um, also want to give you a heads up. You'll have a chance to reflect on what you heard and ask a few questions at the end of my remarks. So if you do have questions, please jot them down. So full disclosure, I am a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, and I started Powerhouse in my late 20s. <laughs> I was definitely an aspiring hopeful, as it was described. So Powerhouse is a venture capital seed fund and co-working space in Oakland, California. We back what we call intelligent energy entrepreneurs, and by that we mean entrepreneurs that are building software and software-enabled technology for the clean energy industry. I'll tell you more about Powerhouse, but I actually want to do something a bit new for me, which is tell you a bit more about myself and my personal journey and what got me here. And the reason why I haven't told that story much is because for years I thought it was more of a liability than an asset. My education and career path are very far from what's considered conventional or normal. I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, and at 15 I was pretty dissatisfied with the education system despite being a natural learner and being curious about the world. And so at 16, I moved abroad to South Africa by myself to try to get some global perspective. You can imagine my parents weren't too thrilled. My senior year, I came back and had no intention of finishing high school at the high school that I started at. Again, my parents weren't particularly happy, and I finished high school through an independent study program, uh, after which I had the opportunity to uh, go to New York for um, college with a scholarship or travel the world, and I chose the latter. I moved to Central America and worked on an organic chocolate and coffee farm which was amazing, and it was my first experience and exposure to clean energy. The farm was completely off-grid, and it was solar-powered, and uh, the electricity that we, that we had at night was from lead-acid batteries. Six months later, I returned home and started taking classes at my local community college for fun. Um, I took ecology, history, stats, and one of my professors one day said to me, you know, you have enough credits that if you wanted to, you could transfer to a four-year university, university and be done in a year and a half. So I transferred to San Francisco State University and I designed a new major. They didn't have what I wanted to study um, and called it sustainable urban development where I looked at urban infrastructure um, around the world with an emphasis on, on energy and renewable energy. It was through San Francisco State University that I met uh, the founder um, of an organization uh, that I would, I would work for starting two days after I graduated from SF State. Um, the founder of this organization is now somebody who's pretty well recognized as a national political leader, but at the time he was pretty unknown, um, and that person is Van Jones. Um, just a show of hands if you're already familiar with Van and his work. Great. So Van is a, a national political commentator. He now has his own show on CNN called The Van Jones Show. Um, he started his career working on prison reform and issues around gun violence, um, but he also started working on renewable energy because his theory was if you can use clean energy to drive economic development, that's going to raise all boats. Um, so I worked uh, with him to launch and lead the first job training program for renewable energy um, in Oakland, California, worked on the city's energy and climate action plan, worked on state ballot initiatives that helped pave the way for the clean energy industry in California. Um, but show of hands if you work in government, academia, policy. Okay, so you know how time-consuming, uh, bureaucratic, slow that process can be, and if you're an entrepreneur at heart, um, it, it can align with your values but not always move as quickly as you wish it would. Um, so, so in that role, I also, my boss at the time left the organization and I was encouraged to apply for, for that position uh, and I didn't get it. Uh, and so they brought somebody else in and um, after a few months I realized that it was time for me to start to think about what was next. And at the time it was a pretty frustrating experience but what I learned is that it was the impetus for me to begin to create the seed of the idea for Powerhouse. Um, while I was still there before I left, Van, who was now working as an advisor for President Obama, uh, he, he introduced me to a startup um, called Mosaic. And Mosaic at the time was building a crowdfunding platform to help community-based organizations and nonprofits go solar in Oakland. Um, Van was friends with the, the, the singer Prince, and Prince uh, did a lot of uh, philanthropic work that he didn't tell anyone about. Um, and because of his friendship with Van, he decided to put up some money to help these organizations go solar in Oakland through this platform called Mosaic. Um, Mosaic was new to Oakland and they needed somebody to help connect them to their first customers, these nonprofits and community-based organizations. So I worked with Mosaic on their first few projects. I was climbing up on rooftops and helping close these initial deals. 
um, my, the person who became my co-founder in Powerhouse was connecting Mosaic to their first, cust their, their first investors uh, and was giving them free office space in an old office that they had. And it was seeing the combination of customer connections that I was helping to provide, capital that my co-founder was helping connect Mosaic to, and physical space that seemed like a formula that any startup would need to succeed. And so the idea for Powerhouse came from that work, and, and the idea was that there must be five or 10 or 50 or 500 other Mosaics out there that have given the right support in the form of customer capital and physical space. The chances of success, the chances of, of startups succeeding much more so than we just saw, are gonna be much higher than if they're out there on their own trying to do it by themselves. So we looked at what else was out there, and to our surprise, there was not a community for clean tech and clean energy entrepreneurs in the San Francisco Bay Area that provided those three things, the customer connections, capital, and the physical space. We found our first investor who wrote a $50,000 check, which at the time was enough for me to decide to leave my job and pursue this full time. We started with just a handful of companies, including Mosaic, um, another called KWH Analytics, and a third called Powerhive. Mosaic has since become the largest loan provider for residential solar in the country. They just did their $2 billion worth of loan financing, meaning if you're a homeowner and you want to put solar on your roof and you don't want to shell out the cash, they will make that capital available to you, and they've done that with $2 billion to date. Um, since 2013, when we started the company with that handful of companies, we have since housed 50 startups and organizations in our co-working space. We now have 15,000 square feet of space in downtown Oakland. We house over 120 entrepreneurs and 20 startups, and we've invested in 17 of them. When we moved into our new office in downtown Oakland, uh, we were still, we were the lean startup, and we had very little money um, for the space, uh, let alone for furniture, and what we did have were a bunch of old solar panels, so one weekend we came in with crowbars, took the junction boxes off of the back, used Gorilla Glue to put them on IKEA desks, uh, and to date those are our desks that we use in our conference rooms, which we still get compliments on. When we moved in, we decided to have a, an office warming party, and I was afraid that we wouldn't get more than maybe 25 or, people and it, uh, 25 or 50 people, and it was going to feel really empty. So I personally emailed everyone I'd ever met through Powerhouse and invited them to come. And lo and behold, we had 320 people on our roof deck. Um, we had a jazz band and a paella, and I'm sure the fire, fire marshal wouldn't have been happy because we were absolutely over capacity. Um, but entrepreneurship is all about rule breaking. Um, while it sounds great now, and it is, it wasn't always easy. Early on, I struggled to find the right people to build the powerhouse team. Despite having raised $350,000 in seed funding, it takes a lot to run a business like this, and we were constantly uh, running out of money. If I could give myself uh, my younger self career advice, I would have raised more, um, I would have hired more people. I think as a woman and as a young woman, we, also, we often feel and are told that we should do everything ourselves, and we take on too much. Um, on top of that, early on, I was an unknown player in the industry, and I had a lot of people say good luck, some sincerely and some not so sincerely. I've literally had people say to me, oh, I just assumed you would fail, um, but clearly they did not know me. While I'm proud of everything that Powerhouse has achieved, I do believe that this is just the beginning. Um, and I share this background and more of my personal story because maybe you don't follow or you don't want to follow a conventional path. I'm here to tell you that I didn't either, and sometimes it is that unique factor that is your greatest asset, not a liability. What I take away most from the unconventional path is the importance of autonomy. I think we often feel like we're leading the lives that others expect of us rather than the life that we truly want for ourselves. Not so long ago, clean energy was also the unconventional path. Clean energy was the outsider. Um, but that is changing really quickly. Um, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, there are five fun facts that help shed some light on where we are as an industry and where we're going. Today, global electric vehicle sales will, by the end of this year, will be close to 1.5 million. China represents over half of the global market. In 2018, global solar installations will be at least 107 gigawatts. New countries will become established as significant players in the market. China will dominate, but Latin America, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Africa will make up a sizable measure of the PV market. Battery prices are going to continue to decline, decline by 10 to 15 percent, given economies of scale. 
Autonomous cars by the end of this year will have driven 8.3 miles in autonomous mode, surpassed the 333 billion that was invested last year, taking cumulative investments since 2012 to over $2.5 trillion. So clean energy is becoming the new normal. One of my favorite resources for stats like this is Green Tech Media and their podcasts. Show of hands if you listen to the Energy Gang or the Interchange. Highly, highly recommended. Um, Powerhouse teamed up with Green Tech Media to launch a new podcast called What It Takes, Watt spelled W-A-T-T. And on What It Takes, we feature the founders of some of the biggest companies in clean energy, and they tell the personal stories of how they built their businesses. And on every episode, I ask our guests, what has made the biggest difference for you in building your company? What was it the technology? What was it? Was it the venture capital support? And what every single guest has said is that their team is everything. The team is what they're most proud of. The team is what makes the difference. We recently featured the founder and managing partner of Double Bottom Line Investors, or DBL Investors, based in Palo Alto, a woman named Nancy Fund, who's one of the most successful venture capitalists in the clean energy industry in the world. And what she said is, I would rather have an A-plus team and a B-plus technology than a B-plus tech I'd rather have, yes, rather than, I'd rather have an A-plus team than a B-plus technology, um, as opposed to an A-plus technology and a B-plus team. Speaking of teams at Powerhouse, we work at the intersection of energy, software, and venture capital. As you all know, um, all of those uh, are very much male-dominated. In the U.S., 92% of venture capitalists are both white and male. Less than 4% of venture capital funding goes to women, and less than 1% goes to underrepresented people of color, uh, particularly to black and Latino founders. At Powerhouse, 50% of the investments that we've made have gone into startups with founders and CEOs that are women and underrepresented people of color uh, in technology. A report from McKinsey and many others tells, tell us that companies with diverse ex executive leadership make more money. So as future founders, as team members, you will have a fiduciary responsibility to your investors to make the most money, and you do that by having diverse executive leadership. At Powerhouse, we happen to be a majority women team. Uh, everyone on my team, other than myself and our CFO, are under the age of 30. I think one of the greatest gifts in life is doing work that you believe in uh, with people who you believe in. Every Wednesday at, open, at, at Powerhouse, we do something called Open House. If you're ever in the San Francisco Bay Area, you're welcome to join. It's from 2 to 2.30. It's a 30-minute speed session where the entrepreneurs that are in Powerhouse that day and invited guests circle up, and each person has a minute to share who they are and what they do so that we can build relationships with one another and bring the broader community in. And we also do a question of the week. So uh, this week, I told them I was coming here and asked them, what would you want this audience of students and entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs to know. So here are the top 10. Number one, swing for the fences on impact, not on money. If you're motivated by impact, the money will follow, but it doesn't work the other way around. Number two, clean energy is broad. There are opportunities for every major, every interest, and every skill set. Number three, don't get jaded, you're young. Things will change in unexpected ways, and it's your generation that will define the future of energy, so roll with it and adapt. Number four, as an entrepreneur, you will have to want the thing you're building so much that you're willing to tell thousands of people about it because most people won't care. Number five, work where you can see the difference that you make every day. Number six, seek genuine understanding before creating something. If you want to build a startup, work at one or two or three before you start your own. Work, will you, work where you will have the opportunity to learn and do the most and then move on. Number seven, don't expect your career to be an awesome linear line. It's typically all over the place. Try to break the millennial expectation that it's going to be totally fulfilling 100% of the time. There are going to be hard days. Success takes grit. Number eight, be self-aware. Know your strengths. Partner with founders who complement your weaknesses. Number nine, we don't need another selfie app. Number 10, you don't have to come to Silicon Valley to be a clean energy entrepreneur. Think beyond the bubble. But if you are going to build a clean energy software company, you might want to consider doing it at Powerhouse. So to close, before I turn it over to you, I hope that you show your professors, your current and future bosses, your teams, and your investors what is possible with your own grit and determination and drive. Energy has been done way, one way for the past 100 years, but it is changing. We can do energy better. It's your generation that's going to define what the next 100 years of energy looks like. In the timeline of the world's transition to clean energy, this is absolutely just the dawn, and we're just beginning to see the first rays of sunshine. 
And it's really up to us to determine, will we have a choice in where our clean energy comes from? Will we have national energy security? Will we create millions of jobs? Will we mitigate the worst impacts of climate change? So whatever shape your clean energy career takes, know that Powerhouse is right there with you to back you and to help you build a new clean energy company. So with that, thank you and power on.